Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Zalicious Cooking Series. And this is the Nigerian Local Soup Series edition and I'm about to show you how to make one of Nigeria's most popular local soups. Today I'm going to show you how to make a furry roll. Now this soup originates from the western part of Nigeria and it's popularly eaten by the Yoruba people. Although other tribes in Nigeria also love this dish as well. For example, I am from the eastern part of Nigeria and this is actually one of my favorite dishes to make. So let me show you how it's made, but first let me start by introducing you to the ingredients. For this recipe, you'd need five cups of shredded African spinach, also known as efotete, five pieces of chili red bell pepper, also known as tatashi, four fresh tomatoes, four red scotch bonnet peppers, also known as atarudo, four yellow scotch bonnet peppers, one large onion bulb, one tablespoon of ground crayfish, one cup of shredded smoked fish, one cup of shredded stock fish, seven pieces of tripe, also known as shaki, 10 pieces of goat meat or beef, 10 pieces of cow skin, also known as pomo, three cooking spoons of palm oil, three seasoning cubes, and some salt to taste. So a furry roll, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, is actually one of my favorite soups to eat because it doesn't take time at all to make and it is really healthy because it requires a whole lot of vegetables, like a whole lot of vegetables. And vegetables are really healthy for your body. So I'm going to start by over here in my on my gas cooker. I already have my pot heating up on medium heat. I'm just going to transfer my palm oil into the pot and then allow it to heat up slightly. Okay, so that aside, I'm just allow this to heat up. And then while it's heating up, I'll just come over here and start shredding my vegetables because I have a whole lot of vegetables to shred. The earlier I start, the better. But it's always advisable that you shred your vegetables before you even start cooking the soup. I'm only shredding here just to show you how I shred my vegetables, okay? Good. Okay, so I'll be using some African spinach for this. It's actually called efotete in Yoruba language, but English is called African spinach. So for those that do not speak Yoruba, you know what I mean. And they're actually called green vegetables. They're probably known as green vegetables in this part of the world. So I'm just going to shred them and I'm going to shred them in batches. I've plucked them off the stem, but I didn't take the stem out completely. This is also part of what makes up the Eforiro soup. So you want to leave some part of the stem, okay? So I'm just going to take this and I've actually washed it. Now, I always say that it is advisable for you to wash, to shred your vegetables after washing it. Very important because a lot of people tend to shred it in the marketplace just because they don't want to undergo the stress of shredding and then when they come back, they put it in lots of water and take out all of the nutrients from it. That's actually really wrong. What you, what you do is buy the leaves in whole, bring them home, wash them with some tap water and then leave them out to dry and then afterwards you shred. You notice that when it's dried up, it's easier for you to actually shred them. So please do not shred your vegetables in the market anymore because when you shred it in the market, it has lots and lots of sand and that sand just interacts with the whole dish and spoils the taste of the dish, okay? So I'm just going to lay this gently here and I've packed them together and I'm just gonna use my knife and just start chopping. Now I have a whole lot of vegetables to chop. This is just the first batch. I like to do it in batches so that it doesn't overwhelm me. Okay, so my oil is still heating up and I can see the smoke coming out like that. <laughs> okay, so let's keep chopping until I'm sure the oil is hot enough. Now whenever I'm chopping my vegetables for this particular soup, I do not like to chop my vegetables so tiny. I always like to have them a little bit bulky because I still want to see them in the soup and I still want them to retain its crunchiness. So be careful not to chop them too small. You want them still to be, but in case you prefer it too small, then it, too small, then it's totally fine by me. So I'm just chopping, chopping, chopping. You see how easy it is to chop with a good knife and a really good chopping board. You really do not need to chop this in the market anymore, okay? So, I'm just going to run my knife through it one more time. Just to ensure that the big bits are totally chopped. And I think that's the first one done. And I'll just go ahead and chop up the rest. 
But before I continue, let me come over here and just throw in my chopped onions. Okay, so I'm just gonna transfer all of the chopped onions, I'm using red onions for this, into the you have a sizzle? <laughs> it wasn't so much today, but it's okay. And I'll just give this a stir and allow this to saute for about 45 seconds as usual. Now I think sauteing your onions with some oil is actually one of the major um, process of Nigerian cooking. Like almost every recipe starts with you sauteing some onion in some oil. Some, not all though. <laughs> And this is one way to intensify flavor and onions has lots and lots of flavor and when you do it this way it adds lots and lots of flavor to your dish so i'm just going to saute this it's already looking so good and so yum and i'm already loving the aroma in the kitchen so while it's sauteing i'll just throw in my pepper blend mix now in this mixing bowl right here i have some blended tata shape tomatoes fresh red scotch bonnet pepper and some yellow scotch bonnet pepper as well and i also added some garlic now i know the yoga people will want to literally kill me right now when you've had garlic in your air for real it's not done but i'm a big lover of garlic and i add garlic to whatever i cook that's just who i am okay so i added the ratio of um tatashi to tomato is three parts tatashi and just one part tomatoes you do not want so much tomatoes in this dish you want more of tatashi than tomatoes okay so everything was just blended using a blender and i added just a little a little bit of water to help the blending process be easier and faster for me so everything is just going to go in gently and this is going to form the base for our eforiwe now what you want to do at this point is to fry this for about 8 to 10 minutes now frying this is one of the major parts of this cooking process if you do not fry it your fry will come out tasting really bland and funny so you want to fry it for a really long time 8 to 10 minutes or sometimes even 12 minutes until the puree is dried up and you can literally see the palm oil sitting pretty and bubbling gently right on top of the puree okay so i'm just going to give this a good stir and just cover my pots with my lid and just allow this to fry up just a matter of allowing it to fry up and this is one of the major parts in fact once this part is complete i think the soup is as good as perfectly cooked so let's just leave it to fry and then i'll continue shredding my vegetables and then i'll come back and show you what to do next okay okay so i just finished chopping up all of my vegetables and let me just check on this oh yeah that flame it's one of the second best things I love, to, I love to see when I'm cooking after the sizzle then I love to see the flames so just go out of the pot like that it's soothing <laughs> okay so this is perfectly fried you see how red it looks and how rich it looks and trust me it smells so good next up I'm going to add some locust locust beans it's actually known as iru in the Yoruba language now this is also going to add some flavor to this soup as well and everything's just going to go right in okay so next up i'm going to add some meat in here i have some shaki which is also known as tripe i have some pomo which is known as cow skin i have some goat's meat here i have some beef here and what else do i have i think that's it <laughs> and this is pre-cooked already it's 100 percent cooked really soft and you want to always cook your meat to be really soft you do not want your diners to have like nah, nah. you want them to be able to just eat this and just feel really good with themselves okay so make sure you cook your meat so it's really soft so in goes all of it and next i have some smoked fish here that i have also washed thoroughly and i removed uh, i washed with some hot water to remove the excess dirt from it and everything's just gonna go in the soup is coming together perfectly and me likey. <laughs> Next, I'm adding some crayfish to this dish as well. There's no F for Riro without F for Riro, right? F for Riro. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Pardon me, guys, I'm from the eastern part of Igbo, so I'm sorry. So I'm adding a lot of crayfish to this, and of course, I'm adding some brown chili pepper. 
to my Ed for Mirror as well. I love my food really hot and spicy. You can reduce the amount of pepper you want to add to this, is fine. And some seasoning cubes for some taste. It's coming together. Let me just add one more because I have a lot of leaves over there. And I'll just give this a stir to combine. Now, I'm not going to add any form of liquid to this soup at all. No water, no stock, nothing. I think the only liquid that should go into this soup is your palm oil. Apart from that, no other liquid goes in. Okay? When you throw in the vegetables, when the vegetables come in contact with heat, it tends to release some of its moisture and that moisture turns into liquid. That's one of the ways to get liquid into your soup from the vegetables, not from any other way, okay? So I'm just stirring this around. I already combined. It looks so red and so lush, guys. And it smells so good. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to leave this to simmer for about two to three minutes so that all of the ingredients and stuff can marry. Not so I didn't add any salt yet. I'm not going to add any salt until I'm done adding all the vegetables. Then I'm going to taste for salt and then if it requires more salt, then I'll add more salt. So let's just leave this to simmer for a bit on medium to low heat and I'll be back. Let me just clear up the countertop. Okay, so the flames again. So this has been simmering for a bit and I can perceive the intensity of the flavor for any dish is always all about the flavor, the taste, and of course the way it looks. Never forget. So it's time to bring in the star of this dish, which of course is the Epo Tete, also known as the African spinach. And I always like to add my spinach in batches, just so that I don't make a mess of my gas cooker and then it's easy for me to stir it around and combine it with the sauce. So add it in batches, nice and gently. You always use a big pot whenever you're cooking your effort roll, depending on the quantity you're making. I find that when you use a big pot, it's easier for you to combine the vegetables and the sauce together. Okay? Okay, so, so, that's the first batch in. Let's mix it all around. Trust me, with vegetables, a lot goes a little way. <laughs> you want a whole lot of vegetables because when they come in contact with the heat, they, they wilt and they become really small and you're wondering, well, where's all the vegetables I put in here? So you want to use a whole lot of vegetables. So, I'm just gonna, oh lord, the sauce is so red, vegetables are so green and it just looks so pretty together. <laughs> Don't they? Oh lord, oh lord, oh lord. Okay, so I'm trying not to make a mess of my gas cooker because I hate it when I see vegetable leaves all around the gas cooker. I hate, hate, hate it. You know how I love to sizzle? That's how much I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I can't stand in messy kitchen. I cannot even try to stand it. You see that the vegetables are starting to reveal? So, I'm going to add the next one. I'm going to walk really quickly because I really don't want to keep the vegetables in the heat for so long. I want them to have that, retain their rich green color and then the crunchiness. So I'm just gonna do this again. Step. I think you see you here, go away. I'm trying to be as careful as possible, guys. So I'm just holding this up together and then I've reduced my heat to the lowest, just so that the vegetables don't, the heat don't, doesn't hurt my vegetables. Okay, so that's all the vegetables in and I'm just going to give this one final stir to combine. Do you like what you see, guys? I love the color. Let me just quickly give this a really good taste. Remember that I've not added salt yet. Just a little bit of salt. Just a little. Just to amplify the taste of the other ingredients added. And I'm giving this one final stir. And our F for Rero is as good as, no, almost as good as done. One final stir. One final stir, one final stir. I can't wait to have this dish. Jeez. Another reason why I like this dish is. 
You can actually have it with whatever you like. Sometimes I have it with rice, sometimes with yam, but most people have it with gari, that's eba, or pounded yam, or semovita, or wheat, or whatever you like. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm done now. Let me just get some kitchen paper towel and clean out the edges of this pot. Nobody likes a messy pot. I don't. Do you? I don't think so. I'm back. So one more taste, guys, and it's just perfect. It's just white. And I noticed that the vegetables have released some moisture. If the cameras can come in here, you see that the vegetable is a little bit moist. It's not dry as it was before I put it. And then you notice that it still retained its green color and it still has its crunch and it tastes so good because of the frying of the tomato and pepper and um, every other thing that went in there. And remember that the ratio of tatashe to pepper to tomato is three parts tatashe and one part tomato. You want to use more tatashe than, than, than tomato just so that you achieve that red color and then that intense flavor taste. So now you know how to make a four free roll, as the Yoruba people call it. Hurry now and make it for your family and friends and increase your repertoire of soup recipes in your house. And if you have not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hurry now and click the subscribe button down below and join this beautiful family and so that you can get instant notification whenever I upload a new video. I'll see you again next time with another beautiful recipe. Until then, remember to spread only love and not hate and be very kind to one another. Take care. I love you all. Mwah, mwah, mwah.